Are you born? Welcome to another episode of 10 minutes on Digital.LK, the online IT magazine. Today, we have Mr. Sanat Fernando, the CEO of Ridgecrest. Welcome to the program, Mr. Fernando. Thank you, Sosie. Before we talk about the LinkedIn platform, can you please give us an overview about Ridgecrest? I lived, uh, studied and lived in the United States for a long time and after uh, career, after my career there, I actually just started in the United States where we started, we felt the need for a company that was going to provide solutions for the financial markets. Started there and then I had a decide to come back to Sri Lanka. So I came back here with my family, wanted my kids to grow up here and continued from Sri Lanka where the entire development center of Ridgecrest was built from scratch in Sri Lanka to provide solutions to the global capital markets. What was the inaugural application that ran on LinkLK platform and when did it begin? Uh, well, Tickets are okay. The application that we have for or the service that we have that lets consumers buy movie tickets, mm -hmm. even parties, anything for the convenience of their own homes. That is the very first public facing large scale application that we actually have on the LinkLK platform. There are a couple of other applications that we have done, but that would definitely be what I say is the first. Started around June of last year, June of 2009, is where we launched it. How many other modules that you have made on LinkLK platform and what are your future plans? LinkLK so is, is, as you said, it's a platform. It is something where we are building the initial applications, but the intent is that everybody, the world over, developers the world over will be able to build platforms on LinkedIn. Okay. So the question on how many. We currently have Finance IK, okay, which lets consumers or actually businesses go and view all your financial data in one place. All your bank accounts, everything you can categorize, create budgets, set alerts, manage into your financial picture. We have Tickets IK, okay, which is our first and best known product. We have a new product called Sports IK, okay, which lets you if you want to book a badminton court, if you want to go and play somewhere and you no longer have to call, you have to no longer go there and find out, you can book online. We have another product called Capsule again, which actually is going to get online camera solutions. So those are the four active products. Then we have another product called Auto SK, which is definitely inactive given that we have too much work going on. But that lets you, that is intended to let you manage everything about your vehicle, from registration to information to fuel emissions to everything. So those are currently the modules that are that are available. Future plans are that I want to encourage everybody, especially in Sri Lanka, all the developers to develop on the platform. We are building services where you can give your payment, delivery, uh, transaction capability, the ability to define users and groups, everything will be maintained inside this platform. I want to encourage developers to come and develop on the platform because we will have the entire ecosystem on it. That is definitely our future plan. Can you recall the best moments that you enjoyed while working in the US? So I'm working in the United States, okay. Um, I, at one point, uh, I took a position with Bank of America Securities, the capital markets division of uh, Bank of America. And it was a really great opportunity there. It was a group coming together. I was probably the second employee uh, in that in that group, and it was great. There was a bunch of really smart people, but entrepreneurial inside a large bank that is just entrepreneurial. That we, that we work late into the night, and then that just all go on and good time afterwards. And we had a successful group, and that that definitely comes as I wouldn't say the most enjoyable, but that period was one of the most enjoyable. What was your motivation? for creating products for the Sri market. Okay. Um, well, the motivation for doing anything in Sri Lanka is just right, simply I'm from Sri Lanka. So I love the country, I wanted to live here, I wanted my family to be here. Now, the motivation for creating products is that I believe in that the economy will improve here, it will grow. There was a bet that we took, obviously, even before the hostilities subsided over a year back, that Sri Lanka was a place for growth. 
and by developing applications for the local market, we were going to get the benefits as the economy grew, then we were going to get those benefits. So uh, that is one, and then also regionally, Sri Lanka is a stepping stone to India, Malaysia, Thailand, the, United, uh, the, the Middle East, all of those countries are easily accessible. So you can develop, you can prove, prove a concept here and take it to that region as well. It's the idea of this tool. You have a software solution that caters investors and stockbrokers. Yes. And it has been a success in the United States. Can you elaborate more on this product? Sure. The, uh, it is also in a way more of a platform than a product. And it started out with my experience of working for the large property that's on, on Wall Street. The product is really is meant to serve large institutional investors, people who are trading in the billions of dollars. They have large portfolios of securities that they want to buy and sell. And when they want to buy and sell, they're not buying a single stock or selling a single stock. They're buying 1,000, 2,000. And at the same time, they will be selling a different set of 1,500. So our products are really geared towards efficiently following the client's instruction and getting them either into the market or out of the market at their, with their targets, with their benchmarks. And Visiting lecturer in University of Montreal, what are your thoughts on the talents of those students? Uh, the reason I do this and I enjoy it, I see is that it is it's a refreshing change from the day-to-day -day life to go there and interact with those students. The, they're extremely bright, innovative. Some of the issues that I should also address are based on the education system, based on our culture, etc. You get very few students actually who talk during lectures. So it's very different, I've taught in the United States, and the biggest difference I find is that over here, when I go to class, I have to forcibly point, did you understand, did you understand? Otherwise, nobody talks back. It's not in the United States, it's a dialogue. The entire class is a dialogue, the lecture just goes and starts and it goes on. So those are some of the things that we have to work on. We have to get that inhibition out of them, that they can come up and be confident and speak and speak out and disagree with the lecturer. Then also this, Almost agree. think that in very few students will question. They just assume it's a lecture. The lecture is always right, which is not the case. But once you get them talking, once you get the ideas out, you realize that these kids are really innovative, they're capable, they, they are hardworking. So the prospects for them are right, and which is one of the reasons I'm also bullish. Because those are the kids who are going to come into the IT industry and be the future. So in that case, the future is right. Sri Lanka has a bright future with the success of the IT industry. Do you agree? And if so, why? Definitely agree. I gave you a little part of the answer with the last question, the, the talents of the student population, that they are going to be coming into the IT industry. So in terms of skill, there's no question that we have the skill. There are some issues that the IT industry faces also. The size, we are a small country, and if a company comes here and says, I want to hire $2,000, that's what they are at, $2,000 was too high. Slashcom, the industry body that's uh, focused on IT and BPO, is working with uh, everybody, with students, with the institutes, with the government. One of the biggest things that they're trying to do is work on, that Slashcom is trying to do is grow their capacity, because we see that as a huge bottleneck. But we're also trying to encourage entrepreneurship. We want students to come out of the university and not to look for a job. We want them to go create jobs. We want them to go pursue their ideas, pursue their dreams. And the model the world over that we understand that everybody should accept is that failure is okay. If 10 people start 10 companies, chances are six of those will probably just fail completely. Two or three will meander along and maybe work out, maybe not. One or two will become successful. And those one or two will end up hiring two, three hundred people on average. So not just that one person. So if ten people start at this, you end up creating not did you have ten people going to look for jobs, you would end up with about two hundred jobs that are created as a result. It's good for the country, it's good for everybody. And we are as an industry we are trying to encourage that, we are trying to grow the capacity. 
we are confident of our capabilities and of our talent and of our companies and the management structure and the industry. And regulations have been good from the government side. So we're very confident about the future. And thank you very much, Mr. Fernando. My pleasure, Sandy. It was glad to be on the show. Thank you for having me. Until we meet again with another episode of 10 Minutes, keep logging to Digital Tech Care.